Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Saga and last week I went to see Top Gun Maverick. Yes, that pretty badass film which is all about fighter jets, pilots and basically all things cool and aerospacey. If you've watched some of my videos already, you will know that I studied aerospace engineering at university. And in this video, what I want to do is to talk technical about one particular aircraft that was featured in the film. And that aircraft is the Dark Star supersonic, well not even supersonic, but hypersonic aircraft that basically Maverick tested early on in the film. Okay, so what actually is the Dark Star aircraft within Top Gun Maverick? Well, this aircraft is a hypersonic aircraft which was developed by Lockheed Martin and more specifically Skunk Works. Right, so I keep saying hypersonic aircraft, but what does hypersonic actually mean? Well, in simply put, hypersonic means that anything that is traveling faster than five times the speed of sound, or in other words, anything that travels faster than Mach 5. You've probably heard about the term supersonic, which basically means that something is traveling faster than the speed of sound. Well, hypersonic is just a band higher than that. Yes, hypersonic is still technically supersonic, but the reason why there is a separate category is because the effects on the aero at hypersonic speeds are actually noticeably different to that when the speed is less than Mach 5. The main reason why hypersonic is a class on its own is because well like I said it affects the airflow around the aircraft differently to that when the aircraft is flying at supersonic speeds. So one of the main differences is that the air can become ionized and there will be some dissociation of the actual molecules and atoms within the air. This means that there is so much energy in the air that the various electrons actually are getting ripped off the atoms themselves. As depicted in the film, the Dark Star aircraft is something that can take off and get to hypersonic speeds all on its own. And this is actually extremely difficult to achieve. One of the challenges with actually having a hypersonic aircraft is the sheer amount of overheating that it has to endure. Because as the aircraft flies at faster and faster speeds and especially above Mach 5, there is an incredible amount of heat that the aircraft has to withstand because of the compression of the airflow, causing the airflow to basically have a lot of energy. And like I said before, this is what caused that ionization, dissociation of the air around the aircraft. The second challenge with building an actual hypersonic aircraft that can take off on its own without any other additional aircraft to make it go to hypersonic speeds or at least supersonic speeds is that you would have to have different types of propulsion systems on board. Regular aircraft such as the F-18, the F-35, the F-22 Raptor and basically most sort of fighter jets you would see, they use an engine called a turbojet engine which basically has a intake and then you have a series of compressors, you have your combustion chamber and then the turbine and then you basically have the nozzle to shove all of that hot combusted gas back out the other side to propel your aircraft forward. This is great if you want your aircraft to fly at subsonic and just above supersonic speeds. But this is not ideal at all when you're talking about making an aircraft travel at hypersonic speeds. To achieve sustained and efficient hypersonic and supersonic flight, you would need to use engines such as the ramjet engine or the scramjet engine. And in fact, this is something that's said in the film. As Maverick is achieving hypersonic flight, he goes and radios in saying he's switching to scramjet engines. The reason why a ramjet is called a ramjet is because you're basically ramming air into the I guess the jet engine and then expelling all the exhaust gases out the back after the air has combusted with the fuel. These two types of engines don't actually have any moving parts within the middle so you don't have your compressor and you don't have your turbine all you have is like an empty space and a combustion chamber. You don't need a compressor because as I mentioned before as air is moving faster and faster around the aircraft you're going to create shock waves which are basically compressed bits of air and if your air is already compressed then you don't need to have a compressor because when you when the air is going through the engine it'll be already compressed such that you can ignite it and then create that exhaust gas to propel your aircraft forward. 
The problem with a ramjet or a scramjet, otherwise known as a supersonic combustion ramjet, is that you can't actually use them from the ground. This is because at ground level, your, the air is not going to be compressed because you're not flying at supersonic or hypersonic speeds. And that's why a lot of the hypersonic aircraft that have flown to date have always started off by being flown underneath or attached to another aircraft to take them to a really fast velocity. So those are some of the technical reasons why I think the Dark Star aircraft featured in Top Gun Maverick is one of the coolest aircrafts that they have on that film. If you've seen the film, you probably noticed that on the back of the Dark Star aircraft, there's a little logo of a skunk, and that's supposed to resemble the Skunk Works team within Lockheed Martin. And if you've never heard of Skunk Works before, well, you are in for a real treat. Skunk Works is basically Lockheed Martin's advanced aircraft sort of research and manufacturing wing of the company. And they've come up with aircraft such as the F-22 Raptor, which is the first fifth generation fighter aircraft, the F-117 Nighthawk, which is the first ever stealth aircraft, the U-2 Spice Plane, which can take pictures from around 70,000 feet, and also the SR-71, which is one of the fastest aircraft ever built. So if there's ever a place to work as an aerospace engineer, I would say that this place pretty much tops the list. Though you do have to be a US citizen, so that is a pretty big hindrance to majority of the people that do aerospace engineering. The cool thing about Skunk Works and Lockheed Martin is they actually collaborated with Top Gun to actually design this fictitious aircraft and also try and make it look like that it is something that would feasibly fly at hypersonic speeds. So yeah, they didn't just sort of have that in there just for the sake of being there. They actually sort of worked with the team at Skunk Works to work on real aircraft such as the Dark Star. Well, the Dark Star is not a real aircraft, but you know what I'm saying. But could the Dark Star be a very close sort of resemblance to an aircraft they have in development? Well, that we do not know just yet. But it is sort of theorized that Skunk Works at Lockheed Martin are actually working on developing the SR-72. Basically, the child of SR-71, and this aircraft is supposed to be able to fly at around Mach 5, so it will be breaking that hypersonic level. From my current understanding, the SR-72 is supposed to be an unmanned vehicle, unlike the SR-71, but who knows, they could have people on board. I just don't know the top secret details, and if I did, I wouldn't be sharing them. But I would say that the Dark Star aircraft is probably quite similar, or if not, you know, along the lines of what the team at Skunk Works are doing in order to build that SR-72. So even though the Top Gun films featured some pretty cool aircraft like, like the FA-18 and the F-14 Tomcat, I actually do feel as though the Dark Star aircraft actually was one of my most favorite out of the film. Purely because, yes, it's not real, but from a aerospace technical standpoint, it is pretty badass. So let me know, have you seen the film yourself? What did you think of it? And also, what are your thoughts on Dark Star? And is it possibly, you know, a resemblance to the up and coming SR-72? Who knows, if you work at Lockheed Martin, just uh, send me an email of like the aircraft that you're building. But yeah, other than that, thanks a lot for watching this video and see you in another one.